Well, praise God. Agape. Hallelujah. Agape. Amen. Um, at this time, I want to ask the elders to come on up. We got a special assignment. Uh, elders, please come on up. It's funny because I, 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 these are those rare opportunities I get to make the elders feel uncomfortable, right? <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Let, let's give them a round of applause. Amen. First things first. I'm going to call uh, Will, Will, Will Hunt. My brother, William Hunt, can you come up? Can you come up front? Let's give this young man a round of applause. Amen. Amen. Hey, now some of you don't get crunchy. Come here, man. Give me a don't get crunchy because I called them up here because um, they achieved something great. Amen. They, uh, they won regional champions, right? Yeah, regional runner-up. Regional runner-up yeah. for swim. Yeah. Amen. Let's give God praise. And now you guys are going to state. Yeah. Come on, give God praise. Amen. Well, um, I asked our elders to be up here because they want to lay hands on you. We're going to anoint you in oil. Elder Lance is going to say a prayer over you. And we just thank God for, uh, for one, your anointing. You're blessing God in so many ways. And um, I'll tell you right now, not only do I admire you, but you have classmates and people all throughout school, and I speak over your life that you're going to be doing great things for our Lord Jesus Christ. You receive that? Yes, sir. Amen. Yes. <laughs> Such a good-looking man, man. Praise God. I'm going to stick beside you so I can get more and more good-looking. <laughs> yeah. Father God, I just come to you, Lord. Father God, I just love to see kids just uh, pour out something, Lord, that they just enjoy doing. Father, I just pray that you be with Will and his teammates. Mm -hmm. Father God, I just pray as uh, they go to state, Lord, and they do their travels and they do the swimming, I just pray for an anointing over them. Yes. Father God, I just pray that you put a head protection around them, their families, Lord. Yes. Father God, I just uh, pray that you just uh, let these kids stand out for you, Lord. Yes. Father God, I just pray for uh, just be with them from the top of their head to the bottom of their feet, Lord. Mm -hmm. Father God, just bless them. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Sister Dana is Brother Brian's boss, correct? Amen. So you must have done something wrong, right? And there's like a warning that's up in her dress drawer, and you're like, you know what? Why don't you come to church, sis? Come on, come to church with me. Don't worry about all the tardiness. I'm just playing. But uh, we at Open Arms Community Church want to just welcome you, sis. We believe with all of our hearts that God orchestrated your steps to be here. And out of all the love, not to make you feel uncomfortable, we like to say to you on the count of three, one, two, three. Welcome home. Welcome home with all of our hearts. Praise God. And because you're here, we have, we have a meal afterwards. I'm just, <laughs> we actually have the Valentine's Day banquet. Amen. So please, um, if you don't got anywhere to go, uh, stay. Fellowship. Amen. There's a bunch of food in there. I went over there to get myself some water. And um, oh, my goodness. Praise God. Are you all excited? Hallelujah. Let's give God praise. Amen. Oh, my goodness. Look at, look at what God is doing. Amen. Well, I just wanted to share with you real quick. Did, did you guys like the little intermission slides in between the, the and Brother Aaron, oh, praise God, the culture family are all back in full force. Let's give God praise. Amen. Back in full force. Hallelujah. Say it with me. Don't be crunchy. Which means uh, I need your help going through this worship service. Yes, I know there's food after service. Chill out. Okay? No, I'm not going to preach faster so you can eat. All right? We're going to do what Holy Spirit says to do, but I ask for your help. Let's have a good time. Amen? Amen. If you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, all oh, the gooder and gooder news is you're not going to hell. Amen? Amen. Can you give God praise? The victory is ours. Hallelujah. He loves us. Amen? He's for us. Why? It's not what we do. It's what he has done. Isn't that breakthrough right there, Brother Cody? That it's not what Joey does. It's what he already done. And if I could keep my focus on that, that 
it's what you did, Lord Jesus Christ, not what I do, then Father God says, I can work with that. Can you get an amen? I can work with that, Brother Christian. Brother Christian chooses to say, listen, I messed up, but Lord Jesus, you're perfect. You own me. Father God, forgive me. I don't want to be like this. I want to be everything you want me to be. Father God interrupts him and says, so shall it be. I'm going to bless you with your heart's desires. Why? Because you kept me first. Amen. So I wanted to show you something as far as how Holy Spirit has moved us in this message for, a, I guess you could say like a Valentine's Day message. Um, this is the first time in 15 years I get to preach this kind of message. So I, I am excited. Amen. I am excited. And, and yes, we're going to pray here in a minute. You know, some of y'all look like you're very serious. I don't know why. Oh. I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. You're not at Walmart. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're, you're in God's house, right? I mean, help me out, family. I mean, you should be like. So all together now, if you're saved and you know it, clap your hand. If you're saved and you know it, clap your hand. If you're saved and you know it, then you're. If you're saved and you know it, clap your hand. Oh, Hallelujah. I told Trish earlier today, I don't think I'm going to be using that, that headpiece anymore. I think I'm going to be using this. Amen. I don't, Holy Spirit told me this morning, I want you to use this. So I'm going to use it. Help me because you know I've always used the other thing, right? Get excited. I might fling it across the room. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Say this with me. Will you be mine? Heavenly Father, as we open up in prayer, we thank you for Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, you have all the authority because Father God gave it to you. We have the name above every name, Lord Jesus Christ. We know that you are holy, Father, and that your holy blood covers it. Because, Co Lord Jesus, you are holy. And we've, I ask for your forgiveness, Lord. Would I treat you familiar? When I pray these religious prayers that I think that I'm impressing you or people that I'm around, I ask for your forgiveness because I choose this moment to fall in love with you all over again. And Father, I thank you for the divine moment of this, this message. So in everything, Holy Spirit, this is your church covered by your blood in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Bless us, O Lord. Teach us, Father. I pray, Father God, that every ear would be open to hear. That scales would fall off our eyes, that we would see your glory, Heavenly Father. That we don't judge one another, we don't gossip, we don't hurt Holy Spirit in, on the inside, Father. That we just love you with all we got, Father. Mind, spirit, soul, and strength. And we know the only way to do this is through your anointing in you, Holy Spirit, your resurrection power. So, Father God, I thank you. I thank you, Father, that not only did you save us, but you know us by name. I thank you, Heavenly Father, that you know everything about us. And Father God, I lift up any and every soul here that don't know you. I lift up every soul in here, Father God, that they may have been a Christian or so they thought. But Father God, you're knocking on the doors of their heart. I pray, Father God, that they will not leave here the same. We give you all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. It's in the name above every name, the most glorious, most mighty, most perfect, most holy name, Lord Jesus Christ. And all God's people said, amen. amen. God bless you guys. Let's give God praise. Amen. So quickly, um, when I first met Trish, whoo, I feel the earth quake under my feet. I, feel, I don't even know how the song goes, right? I mean, it was, it was straight up earthquake. I mean, I'm being serious with y'all. When, 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 I, when I first laid eyes on Trish, earth moved. And I said, that's my wife. I said, hallelujah, thank you, beloved. One person in the room agrees. Amen. <laughs> Pastor, I think we're going to need marriage counseling after this sermon. Only one person today, hallelujah. Beloved, beloved Ashley said it. I, I share this with you, not because I'm going to make it about us, but for those of you that are in a relationship or want to be in one, or maybe there's some of you that choose not to be. You're like the Apostle Paul. Praise God for that. You have that special relationship with God. 
But I'd like for you to reflect back on the time when you fell in love with your significant other. Show of hands, was there not an earthquake? Hey, if you ain't raising your hand, you're going to need marriage counseling. I'm going to tell you that right now. You better. One more time. Let's count on the count of three. One, two, three. Did the earthquake? Look at God's children. Hallelujah. Everybody say, yes, yes, the earthquake. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, despite the earthquake, we had to go on that first date. And I remember that first date. Because that first date, listen, that first date, I had so much fear because I was just blown away of her beauty. I had so much fear because I just saw her heart. I had so much fear. Now, listen, this isn't God's fear. This is just, you know, an attraction kind of fear because I was in awe, Sister Stacy, of, oh, my goodness. I'm not worthy to be talking to her, Sister Dana. I was just like, so it became a fear as we went on because I was like, every time that we would meet or, you know, go, you know, go, go to back in California, they got taco shops all over the place, 24-7 taco shops. And we worked at one point different schedules. And so I'd be like, where are you going? She's like, well, I was going to go get some tacos. I'm like, well, where are you going to go? Oh, I'm going to go down over here in Miramar. We're going to get some tacos. I'm like, okay, I'll meet you there. But she didn't know that it would take me an hour to get ready. <laughs> right, Brother James? It took me an hour to get all this ready. You know why? Because I have, I have reverence. I have fear that I want to look my best. Amen? I don't want to present her with ta-da garbage. Right? You ever have that ta-da moment and it isn't what it meant to be? Or somebody pumps something up, you know, like, oh, you got to have this. It's the best. It's the, and then you try it and you're like, Ugh. Right? But then you do one of those. Come on now. Are you holier than me? You, you, do, you do one of those. Mm. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> you better put that fake face on because a, a lot of our church family made this meal, okay? So let's practice that. You take a bite and you go, mmm. <laughs> Amen? Even if it's, ugh. Yeah. <laughs> and then what do you follow it with? That's interesting. Right? But I, I was in fear as far as how awesome Trish was. Her heart, her beauty, right? Her love. I was in fear of that. And then next but not least, as time went on, we had great joy together because we have things of interest, things in common, right? Say it with me, great joy. You start to have joy for one another because now there's this common ground in the relationship where we can actually move forward, right? You start getting a little comfortable, right? Not, not, not so comfortable where you're gross, not like married couples. Oh, am I the only one? Listen, don't get me started because I will tell you, right? We've been married 20 years now. I do things, with, I do things now around the house I would never do when we were dating. I'm talking about, you, 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 right? <laughs> huh? Right? Why? Because we, we get comfortable, right? Is it just me? So with this, <laughs> say this with me, will you be mine? So with the earthquake, with the fear, with the great joy, the question remains, will you be mine? And say this word with me because this is the word that Christmas of last year, Holy Spirit said, I'm putting discipleship in your heart and this other word, behold. And now we're in this new season, say it with me, behold. behold. And this behold is, with all that going on, with the earthquake, with the fear, with the great joy, of course, now you know where we're at, what happens, ta-da! Right? And all this took place in a very record amount of time. I mean, yeah. There's many of us like, oh, I know. Like, I'm talking about months, right? Months. Don't waste no time. Put a ring on it. Right? Say it with me. Put a ring on it. That's right. Amen? Amen? 
Listen, ain't no more test driving. Put a ring on it. I want to man up. I'm going to be man up. Some of us men need to hear that, right? Amen. Don't play games with God. Amen. Don't play games with God. That's his beloved daughter. Amen. His beloved daughter. Praise God. So it, go, it leads us into, will you be my Valentine's? Will you check the box, yes or no? Well, we know Trish checked that box, yes. Amen. She checked that box, yes. That's my Valentine. But we opened all that, took all that time right there to just give you a backstory of what Holy Spirit wanted for this message. And I pray that it not only encourages you, but believe it or not, I pray that it convicts you. Because far too often, whether you're Christian or not, we love to put the emphasis on our earthly relationships. When I say emphasis is we always want to have the best marriages. Can you get an amen? If you're not married and you're dating, you want to, you want to date that godly person in a godly relationship. Amen? Listen, if you're dating, if you're dating, I, I, I say it like this. If you're fishing at the dumpster, what are you going to catch? Trash, right? But if you're fishing at church, can you get an amen? I tell that all the time to, to, to young adults, to single people. If you're going to think you're going to catch, you know, God's anointed at the bar at 2 o'clock in the morning, ain't nothing good happens. At 2 in the morning at the bar. Can I get an amen? amen? But if you had church on a Sunday morning, hallelujah, that's a good foundation. Can I get a hallelujah? hallelujah? You want a good foundation, amen? You want a good foundation for your relationship, right? I like to say it like this. And I just said it not too long ago in one of these marriage um, counseling sessions that we're doing. Um, we told the husband and wife, the jealousy needs to stop. Right? Jealousy, all that does, it just, it, it just opens up every kind of demon to come in and not only mess with your mind, but your heart, and to draw a wedge in your relationship. So the question the, the lady asks, well, how do we get rid of this jealousy? Number one, keep him first. Amen? Amen. See, I know we're going to celebrate Valentine's. For crying out loud, we got a Valentine's Day banquet coming up, right, right after service. We got Valentine's Day tomorrow. For those of you who don't know, our Bible study tomorrow is canceled so that you guys can spend time with your loved one. So we don't have our Bible study for tomorrow evening. I'm saying this to you because, did you get it out anymore? Oh. So Bible study is canceled. I <laughs> <laughs> um, spend time with your, you know, spend time with, with your loved ones. It's, it's Valentine's Day. But I, I encourage you, keep God first in your, in your relationship. Why? This is what addressed this, and this is what provided breakthrough. It's not me. It's not Trish. It's all Holy Spirit over this couple that was struggling for years with jealousy. This is what was said. If you think you could put control over another soul, in what they do, in what they look at, and how they feel towards whatever. You got another thing coming because you can't control none of that. The only one who can control that is God Almighty. Can I get an amen? So here's, here's the breakthrough, and, and here's how the anointing of God just works so mightily. Is that when you treat God this way, that he's number one in your relationship. God Almighty says, I will love her through you, Joey. And I will flow through you. But here's another thing. And this is the example that we, we, we showed to this couple that we're counseling. I said, if I'm at Walmart, I'm at Walmart a lot. And I'm just minding my own business. Can I control what people wear to Walmart? Listen. If you guys go to Walmart in your pajamas, stop that. Stop that. Put some clothes on, please, for the love of God. If you're going to Walmart, young girls, if you're going to Walmart and you got stuff hanging out that shouldn't be hanging out, listen, I pray Holy Spirit conviction over you because you're calling the wrong things to come in. You're calling the wrong things to come in. You don't want that kind of attention. Can I get an amen? amen? 
But the point that I'm making is, if I'm at the vegan section, and I'm looking for my fake chicken, Elder Lance, and I go to put my fake chicken in my basket, and you walk by with short shorts on and, and basically like a bra, and I actually see that, guess what? Who can put me in check at that moment to repent and not look at another soul that way or not lust and to pray for that girl that she would come to know Jesus and not dress like that to call in other demons? Who can do it? Amen. And that's why we need to keep God first. Can I get an amen? Happy Valentine's Day. Amen. God is the one that can keep us in check because you know why? He wants the best for us. But it's also free will. I can hear from Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit tell me, look away. And then I can do one of these things. May I ask you, family, is that sin? It's what the Bible calls adultery, right? I pray that in this message that Father God is going to shake the ground that we're standing on right now. I pray that his Holy Spirit, that his power will convict us. And I pray above all that as we're transparent with God in this worship service, it's just going to be a few more moments, praise God, that we are so open with the Lord that we're going to confess things out. Amen? I pray that you confess things out. Amen? There's power in confession. And I pray that you would confess that. Listen, it doesn't matter how old you are. The beauty of Holy Spirit's church, Open Arms Community Church, is this. Every message is tailored to whoever has ears to hear. You're going to get something today. Amen? Are you all ready? Say amen. Praise God. Amen. Matthew 27, 54 said this. So when the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake, say it with me, earthquake, and the things that had happened, they feared greatly, saying, truly, this was the Son of God. Amen? How many in, in, in this lifetime, right now, how many have, have you truly felt that God has shaken you to your core? Can I get? Hey, family, look around right now. There's, there's so many hands that go. And isn't it beautiful at that moment when God shook you at your core? Here in his holy church, we always have the picture of his crucifixion. Even as gruesome as that looks, guess what? It still didn't compare to true biblical accounts of what the crucifixion looked like because he was barely even recognizable as a human being, the way they beat him, the way the flesh hung off, hung off of him. But, you know, when we choose to get shaken, this is when it's so personal between you and God, mighty man of God. This is where, get ready, God is going to light such a fire in you. I believe the reason why there's so much homosexuality in this fallen world is because the souls haven't been shaken to this point. I do. Do you agree, Brother Brian? Right? We got men chasing after men. You know why? The real man you need is Jesus. Can I get an Amen. We got women chasing after women. You know why? Ain't no man attracts them no more. You need to be attracted to Jesus. Can I get hallelujah? Listen. Listen. I've been through it. I've been through it. Rape and molested when I was real young, I've been through it. The confusion, thinking that, okay, well, maybe this is the way I got to be. Because this happened to me when I was so little. Praise God. Praise God. The Holy Spirit in me, back when I was real little, said, no, it's wrong. You don't want to go down that road. Can I get an amen? amen? But guess what? Just like that moment of putting my fake chicken in the shopping cart, does God give me free will? You see, as a beloved child of God, God, he don't control you. He wants a relationship with you. See, there's two different things. Religion teaches control. That is not love. Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ teaches relationship. 
relationship with the Father who loves you despite what you're going through. But then Lord Jesus Christ also teaches, if you see the truth, make up your mind. If you see what's right and you see what's wrong, Lord Jesus taught it when he was on this earth. Choose right and don't sin anymore. But what has this culture adopted now? Right? What has this culture adopted? The, this culture adopted, well, Jesus, all right. I got you, Jesus. I got you, Jesus. Yeah, I'm a Christian. I got you, Jesus. But I can look at anybody I want to. I can do whatever I want to do. I can sleep with whoever I want to sleep with. May I ask you, is that Jesus? See, right now, God is trying to do an earthquake in you. Can I get an amen? If you say you know Jesus, but then you're doing something that is coming against Holy Spirit, is that God? Is God perverted? Is God addicted to anything? Oh, come on. Does God cuss? Mm, that one stung a little bit. Seriously, I saw like a little flash. There is no more excuse, beloved child of God, as saying, well, I struggle with this. You know why you struggle with it? You choose to struggle with it. Say it with me. It's a choice. Make up your mind. Amen. If, if your mind is made up that I'm no longer going to be like that, here's the beauty. You ain't no longer going to be like that. Let's give God praise. Amen. Why is that? You made up your mind. You made up your mind, which means, may I ask you something? If a thought comes that tries to shake you, you already felt the main earthquake. You felt the main earthquake of what God did to his perfect son so that you would not go to hell. Truly, 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 in the name of Jesus, if you really felt this earthquake of what I'm speaking with, which means that your salvation is based truly on one man. His name is Lord Jesus Christ. That if you truly felt this earthquake, that you're saying to me, that when I called on my Lord Jesus Christ, I know, as the Bible says, that I am crucified with Christ. And it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. Galatians 2.20, if you want to pull up the scripture. If that's you, will you stand up for the Lord? Don't stand up if you didn't, if you didn't. You see the beauty of what you did right now. In standing up, you could feel Holy Spirit's presence. Just, he just wants to flow. He just wants to be God. You're his masterpiece. He loves you. Despite what you came in this morning with, despite what you think you're struggling with, he's God Almighty and he loves you. He sees his blood over you right now, over your entire house. He sees what you're thinking right now. He sees what's going on in your heart. But what you just did right there, you said, Father, I want you to shake me. I want this earthquake in my life to recognize that you are holy, that you are Lord Jesus Christ, and that, Father God, you own me, and that your spirit is living inside of me. Amen? Amen. Let's give God praise. Hallelujah. You may be seated. We're going to talk about fear. Amen. Say with me, fear. Now, this is the good fear. This is the good fear. Well, pastor, explain. What do you mean good fear versus bad fear? The bad fear is the fear of this world. The bad fear is, praise God, the, the, the bad fear is any other kind of fear other than fearing God. The only good fear there is is fearing God Almighty. Fearing agape. Who's agape? Can you break them up? Huh? I'm telling you right now, it's trending big time. It's trending big time. Listen. There is such a thing called being spiritual. Give me a second to be a sushi chef and cut this off. Can I get an amen? amen? Being spiritual is not Holy Spirit. We are in spiritual warfare. Can I get an amen? amen? When you worship Lord Jesus Christ, the anointing of God the Father speaks in you and lives in you. His name is? Holy Spirit is God. Amen? And Holy Spirit lives on the inside of you and me as a beloved child of God. Amen? Holy Spirit is the seal of Lord Jesus Christ. Can I get an amen? 
Come on, you go to Matthew 7 when Lord Jesus Christ says, depart from me, I never knew you. That, but Lord, did they not say that to him? But Lord, Lord, we did this in your name. We did that in your name. We did this in your name. We did that in your name. We did this in your name. We did that in your name. But remember, it goes back to what was said earlier and how Holy Spirit just taught us. You say you're, you are Christian, but then the fruit of your life is evil. Is that Holy Spirit? Right? You say you are a Christian, but then you can be racist about, is that Jesus? Let me ask you something. Does God only love white people? Does God only love black people? If so, I'd be in trouble. What about me? Right? Say with me, my God loves everybody. Amen. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Oh, he loves you. He loves you. I love messing with you guys. You know, he, if you've been planning here for a long time, we like to say, God loves me more than he loves you. Right? And see, right away, Sister Kessing, uh-uh. I'm his favorite. Ain't it beautiful? Look, some of y'all got crunchy. Don't get crunchy. It's okay. But I'm his favorite. Y'all would think if you drove by our house, y'all would think we'd fighting sometimes because Trish and I'd be yelling at each other in the house. I'm his favorite. No, I'm his favorite. I'm his favorite. And then I hear, hey, and then, hey, and then I hear those footsteps going upstairs. Then, then that door, I'm like, she's going to go tattle. She's going to go in her secret place and tattle to our daddy. And she does. And when she went, she opened, I'm like, why you got to go do that? She goes, I'm the favorite. <laughs> Amen. In Proverbs 9, 10 says this, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Amen. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. We ask God for wisdom. Right? We ask him for wisdom. Holy Spirit, give me wisdom. But if I don't fear, if I didn't experience that earthquake, is this getting to somebody right now? You see, I grew up in San Diego, California. I've experienced my share of earthquakes. And I'm talking about a, a real earthquake. How many of you have experienced a real earthquake? Raise your hands. Quite a bit of us. Praise God. Ain't that something, Elder Charlie? Ain't that something? When that thing comes about, <laughs> oh, you don't know how long it's going to last. And you don't know how much stronger it's going to get. You just know something wrong. Right? And, and, and sometimes you try to ride it out. I remember when I was little, I don't know how old, forgive me, but I remember that because there's just, you know, quite, it happens frequently in California. And you just, you know, oh, <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, okay, you know. Oh, you know, I mean, it's just like a little short burst, right? But there was this one time, Brother Mason, oh, my goodness. Hey, oh, oh, oh. And I was like, okay, it should have stopped already. And then that's when the panic comes in. And my, I, my mom's like, come on, get in the bathroom. I'm like, I don't need a potty. I didn't know you go to the bathroom. That was, that was a whole learning thing. But it's supposed to be, Pastor, why is that? Is that the safest place? I, I guess the way, I guess the way, the, huh? There you go. Oh, well, see, praise God. We learn something every day, amen? This is where God wants us in your, say it with me, my, in my relationship with God. Has God shook you so good? And does he continue to shake you in this love? We're falling in love with God all over again today, family. Can you get an amen? I choose to fall in love with God. Oh, hallelujah. God says, if you want wisdom from me, first things first, fear me. Do you fear God? Now be careful because I've been around people that said they fear God, but then they put things in their body that they weren't supposed to, even when God said not to. They did it anyway. That's not fearing God. You say you fear God, but then you let a cuss word come out. Is that fearing God? Come on, say it with me. Change me, Lord. Can I get an amen? Listen, I may be right in some of you. Don't, don't get upset. 
take it up with the Lord. Amen? Because do you not agree God wants the best life for us always? He wants the gooder and gooder. God wants his presence to flow through us in ways that is unspeakable. I want, I, listen, I want that. I want that. I want God to convict me where I'm wrong, convict me where I hurt him, and above all, Father, change me because I don't ever want to offend you that way ever again. Can I get an amen? amen. Change me. Hallelujah. I found out just the other day, Trish don't like it when I leave peanut butter dishes in the sink. But guess what? She didn't have to tell me. Holy Spirit told me. So the beauty is, is that when I washed that dish and I put it up, when I was done, I said, you really don't like it when I leave peanut butter on the dish and put it in the sink? And she looked at me and she started to tear up. She goes, no, I don't. I said, why didn't you say anything? She goes, I just tattled. <laughs> I said, I know you tattled because God told me. And now I'm starting to do dishes more frequently now. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory be to God. I, 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 washed, I, work, I washed my first load of laundry in, in our brand new washer and dryer. The other. Sit down. Sit down. It's so funny. I started doing, I, st I started loading the laundry. You could hear her going, hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. I'm like, honey, I, he hears you. He's dealing with me right now. Okay, man, praise God. Do you fear God enough that you would do things when Holy Spirit whispers it to you? Do you fear God enough where maybe it's the way you're speaking to your spouse that he says, I don't like the way you speak. You need to change that. Maybe it's your temper. Whew, it got so quiet in this house, didn't it? And you know Holy Spirit saying, that temper is from the pit of hell. I want you to crucify that. We got some work to do here in a moment at this altar. Can you get an amen? And I want to bless you with this. Our elders, pastors, they're anointed of God. They will lay hands on you and pray for you if you want to confess it out. There's power, say it with me, there's power in confession. You know why? Because when you confess, you're saying to God Almighty, I have no excuses. I'm just coming as I am. You already know you're God Almighty, but I hear what you're saying and I'm going to confess it out. Amen. Will you confess it today? Praise God. You see, when Lord Jesus Christ yielded up his spirit and that veil was torn, many people don't realize this, but the real work began for our God. He saved our souls from the pit of hell. How many of you believe that there is a hell? I can't be a preacher that preaches about heaven all the time without telling you that there is a devil, there is a hell. And this devil, hell, wants to entice people. Look, 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 look at all the, uh, the shows right now on TV. I remember when I was growing up, did, am I the only one that feels this way? Me growing up, I feel so out of place in this world because it doesn't match the way I was brought up. Does that make sense? Like, like I grew up, even though my mom basically raised me and my grandma, listen, if I looked at my mom funny, she would knock my eyeball out the socket. I'm telling you right now, if I answered back with, with an attitude, I'd be picking up my lips off the floor. I'm just telling you right now, you do not do that to an adult. The other day I heard a child tell his mom, shut up. I had to go, what did you say to your mommy? And then the mom said, oh, no, he just said, I'm like, that's not okay. And guess what? i supposed to mind my own business. Children, listen. If you're running your mouth telling your grandpa, your grandma, your parents to shut up, I want to have a conversation with you after church. Amen? Because we're going hey, to lay hands on you pray over you. I'm not going to lay hands on them like that. 
All right, calm down. I'm not going to do this to your child. I'm going to anoint them in oil and lovingly. Amen. But it's wrong. But this world is so different. It's amazing to me because the kids and the teenagers are ruling the house. And they're loving it. Oh, they're loving it. And guess what? They like to play the whole emotional game now. Say it with me, fear. We have to put the fear of God back into our houses. Because when you honor God with this fear, that you fear him, and that you know, Lord Jesus, you went to hell to save my soul. And I know right now there's a constant battle. There's a constant battle. Listen, beloved child of God, you can have this relationship with God, and you can say, well, I'm a Christian, I'm saved, I have Jesus, I'm saved, I'm going to heaven. That's between you and God. Can you get an amen? amen? But hear my heart. When you have a relationship, say that word with me, relationship. When you have a relationship with the living God, that Jesus Christ is your Lord, Holy Spirit now resides on the inside. Can you get an amen? And that changes everything. Can I get an amen? He will change everything in your life. Hallelujah. And I ask you, will you ask God, I want to fear you and only you, Father. I want to fear you in such a way. Shake my world. I want to fear you in such a way that I don't ever want to come against you. I want to fear you in such a way that when you speak, everything else is muted. Everything else is silent. I want to fear you in such a way that when I hurt you, I don't want to just be the child saying, Oh, I'm sorry, Father. I plead your blood, Lord Jesus Christ. I know that I'm forgiven of my past, present, future. You know what that is? Religious. A relationship is, I don't ever want to disappoint you, Father God. Because I know what you did and I'm asking you, Lord, change me. Because I don't want to live this way. I don't want to have this kind of relationship with you. I want to have a deeper relationship with you. Amen? Hallelujah. Leaders testify, overseers testify of their marriages getting gooder and gooder, of their relationships with their spouse, their husbands getting gooder and gooder, right? Of relationships with family, church family getting gooder and gooder. You know why? It's his presence that is overflowing, overflowing in your heart, overflowing in your mind. Can I get a hallelujah? Hallelujah. This is, why, this is why Lord Jesus Christ said, love daddy, love father with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. Amen? Can, can, can we do that? Can, can we just clinch really hard? real, And don't let go. Just Some of you, come on, join with me. Everybody, like clinch your fist really hard like you're trying to just squeeze some. And, and, and say this with me. Jesus. Now keep clenching, keep clenching. Come on, help me out, family. Come on, some of you can do it harder. God Almighty sees you. And hear my heart, what you're clenching on, there's something there. Say his name, Jesus. Jesus. And Father wants us to be shaking like this all the time. You can let go. There's some of you that don't even want to let go. Praise God for that. Hallelujah. Say this with me, great joy. I will greatly rejoice in Isaiah 61. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord, my soul shall be joyful in my God. For he has clothed me with garments of salvation. He has covered me with righteousness, with robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with ornaments, and as a bride adorns herself with jewels. How many of you remember that day when you called on Lord Jesus Christ to save you? Was that an awesome day? Did God shake your world that day? Rock your world? I heard rock. What? Drop the mic? (laughs) Is that what you said, sis? Back here. Some some of y'all raise your hand. Was your your world shaken that day when you called on the Lord? Yeah, Cody? Didn't stop shaking the whole day, right? Who else back there? Rocked your world? Amen. That's right, Brother Anthony. Jesus rocks our world. Amen. Where are we getting at as we pause in our worship? That moment 
God wants it to last for eternity. But notice how we are as humans. It was a moment. I experienced it. But it was in the past. The power of Holy Spirit in you is that you can fall in love with God all over again today. And not just go back to that feeling of when you called on his name and got saved. But you can start living a life, what the Bible calls a life of abundance. Starting today, starting now, and growing deeper and deeper intimately with God. Every single moment of every day. Do you want that? If you want that, stand up with me, praise God. If you don't want it, sit down. I'll take your blessing. Say it with me, great joy. So this message in behold is simply this. Will you be my valentine? Isn't it beautiful that God Almighty asked that of you? My child, will you be my valentine? When Father God asked this of you, the only way that he could provide that little note for you to check is through that one perfect sacrifice of his and only his. His name is Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ is asking, will you be my valentine? And the beauty is I hear yeses all throughout his holy church. Yes. I said yes to you, Lord. I checked that box. I am your valentine. But the beauty of our God, it doesn't stop there. Lord Jesus Christ did not leave us and said, good luck. There's no such thing. Lord Jesus Christ said, I got to go. I know you'll miss me, but be encouraged. Because it's greater that I go. Because I'm going to send my precious Holy Spirit. And just like I taught you for these three plus years when I walked with you. And we ate together. And you saw the miracles. And you saw the love that outpours from the Holy Father in me. Because Lord Jesus Christ always said, I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Lord Jesus said, when I go to my Father, if you check that box, yes. That you say, you are mine and I am yours. My Holy Spirit will live in you forever. Holy Spirit is asking, will you be my Valentine? Amen. I pray that as we listen to these songs and we have this altar open, I'm going to ask for the leadership to come up. All the overseers of the church, please. I ask you in Jesus' name, don't hold back. If you have a confession from your heart, if you're struggling with something, go to somebody new. Don't go to somebody that you know. Maybe you're too familiar with that person. But go to someone that you don't know and confess to them. I've struggled with this. Or I thought that I had this. Or the devil started making me. Guess what? I declare in the name of Lord Jesus Christ, say it with me, no more. So if that's you, I charge you to come. To come up front. To pour out your heart. Because here is the true Valentine's Day gift. Are you ready? I speak for Open Arms Community Church that we, say with me, I, I. say with me, I am. I am, say with me, I am going to, going to. bless God with an earthquake, amen. Come to the altar, amen.